gentlemen for being here. Uh, you both have up to five minutes for uh, opening uh, statements. And Mr. Peterson, I believe you're going to lead off. Professor, the floor is yours. So I think the first thing I'd like to bring up is that it's not obvious when considering a matter of this sort what level of analysis is appropriate. You smart. No, I made some videos criticizing Bill C-16 and it's and a number of its uh, of the policies of the policies that surrounding it and I think the most egregious elements of the policies are that it requires compelled speech um, so I think that's appalling first of all because there hasn't been a piece of legislation that requires Canadians to utter a particular form of address that has particular ideological implications my boys wicked smart Identity is not and will never be something that people define subjectively because your identity is something that you actually have to act out in the world as a set of procedural tools, which most people learn, and I'm being technical about this, between the ages of two and four. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! The social constructionist view insists that human identity is nothing but a consequence of socialization, which is which and 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 there's an in, inordinate amount of scientific evidence suggesting that that happens to not be the case. An in, in <laughs> the people who are promoting that sort of perspective know perfectly well that they've lost the battle completely on scientific grounds. with regards to respect is that you don't meet people, generally speaking, in a mutual display of respect. You generally meet people in a mutual display of alert neutrality, which is the appropriate way to begin an interaction with someone. Fucking based! Because respect is something that you earn as a consequence of reciprocal interactions with, with that are dependent on something like reputation, which is also a consequence of repeated interactions. That's like Super base, Murdoch. And so the notion that addressing someone by their um, self-defined self-identity is necessarily an indication of basic human respect for them, I think, is an entirely spurious argument. Fucking based. Especially given that there's no evidence that moving the language in a compelled manner in this direction is going to have any beneficial effect. We're supposed to assume that just because, hypothetically, the intent is positive, that the outcome will be positive. Fucking beast. Any social scientist worth his or her salt knows... ...worth his or her salt. Jordan with the behind the save! ...knows perfectly well that that's rarely the case, so... Well, where's the evidence that, that anti-unconscious bias training works? There's no evidence, and what little evidence there is suggests that it actually has the opposite effect because people don't like being brought in front of a re-education committee and having their fundamental perceptions, you see, their perceptions, not even their thoughts, but their perceptions themselves, altered by collective fiat. You see, their perceptions, not even their thoughts, but their perceptions themselves. I'm thinking like, man, did this dude just did this? The legislation devolves into a kind of, of, of absurdity, as far as I can tell. I mean, one of the people that I discussed this with claimed that the way that you kept track of someone's personal pronouns was to use your cell phone as an adjunct to your communication. And I mean, that's... Well, are you retarded? You wouldn't say anything like that if you knew anything about common human nature, let's say, and the manner in which people communicate with one another. Okay, so, so the type... Um, you know, I've been following the, the battle of, let's say, ideologies on campus for a very long period of time, and I, I suppose I have some expertise in that, and there's a... There's an ideological war that's ripping the campuses apart, yeah. uh, and it's essentially between a, 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 an ideological variant that's rooted in what's come to be known as postmodernism, with kind of a neo-Marxist base, and and modern modernism, I would say. 
And that, that's accounting for all the turmoil on the campuses, and I see this as an extension of this campus turmoil into the broader world, and, and I really believe that is the proper level of analysis. I truly believe that. And so I said that I believe that this is the, a vanguard issue in a kind of ideological war, and that I'm not going to participate on the side of the people whose, whose ideological stance I find reprehensible, unforgivable and reprehensible, especially the Marxist element of it. And so I announced that I wasn't going to use these words. Not going to be able to do it! Because I don't believe that they're instantiated to protect anyone's rights. I believe they're, that the, the, the ideologues who are pushing this movement are using unsuspecting and sometimes complicit members of the so-called transgender community to push their ideological vanguard forward. And I firmly believe that. So I'm not participating in that. Consent is not only important, it's pretty great. And the fact that it's potentially illegal for me not to participate in that is something that I regard as, I think that's absolutely dreadful. It, it's, it, make, it puts a shudder in my heart as a Canadian that we could even possibly be in a situation like that. The social constructionist view of gender isn't another opinion, it's just wrong. So, because, and I can, I can tell you why that is fairly, I'll, I'll take one minute to do that. Please. Well, the proposition that's in, instantiated, for example, in this, in this particular visual, which is a good representation of the, of the philosophy of the policies, is that there's no causal relationship between the, these four dimensions of identity, and, and that's palpably absurd. I mean, 98% of people, it's 99.7% it's of people who inhabit a body with a given biological sex identify with that biological sex. It's, it's, they're t incredibly tightly linked. If, if you can't uh, attribute causality to a link that that's tight, that's that <coughs> tight, you have to dispense with the notion of causality altogether. And then of the people who, who identify, say, as male or female, who are also biologically male or female, the vast majority of them have the sexual preference that would go along with that, and the gender identity, and the gender expression. These, these levels of analysis are unbelievably tightly linked, and the, the evidence that biological factors play a role in determining gender identity is, in a word, overwhelming. There isn't a serious scientist alive who would dispute that. Now, you get, you get disputes about it, but they always stem from essentially from the humanities. Oh, no, you didn't. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I've looked at it very carefully. Those arguments are entirely ideologically driven. It's a tenant of the ideology that identity is socially constructed. And that's partly why it's been instantiated into law, because there's no way they're going to win the argument. But they can certainly win, let's say, the propaganda war, especially by foisting this sort of reprehensible uh, advertising information on children. And that's part of the, that's part of the express intent. One of the reasons I criticized this to begin with was because when I went through the policies, I could see that they're absolutely incoherent. So, for example, here, let me give you another example. So there's an insistence in the Ontario Human Rights Commission that sexual preference is an immutable phenomena, <laughs> which indicates, at least in principle, that it's biologically grounded. It's that woo woo, you know what I'm saying? But on the same, by the same token, in exactly the same policies, they presume that sexual identity, gender identity, and gender expression are entirely independent. Decoration, man. It's just yeah. for decoration. That's, that's it. it and that's all, man. We do it for decoration. You have it on your it's like, sorry, guys, you can't have both of those because one's A and one's not A, and you can't put those together. And, like, there's, there's endless numbers of places in the policy uh, surround, surrounding Bill C-16 that are characterized by that kind of logical incoherency. And, I mean, what's it going to do to people who are transgender who are making the claim that they were, say, born that way at birth, which is a strong claim? That's a biological claim. It indicates that there's a direct causal connection between some biological phenomena and the expression of a particular identity. It's actually the strongest defense that people who have, let's call them non-standard sexual identities or gender identities, have to defend okay. their claims. I have to wrap it up there and... No one has ever done that! No one has